1628, Europe is at war. Sweden's king has prepared to join the fray by commissioning one of the largest and most impressive battleships his country has ever seen. She is called the Vasa. But when the time comes for battle, the great ship never arrives. In fact, the glorious Vasa sinks before she even leaves the harbor. A bizarre accident unlike any other in history. It will take more than 300 years to learn what happened and to raise the ship from the icy deep. Three centuries and a strange fishing trip made by one persistent man. She was the Titanic of her time. More than 200 feet long, 150 feet high, weighing 500 tons, with 10 sails and 64 cannon. To build her hull took the wood of 1,000 oak trees. The Vasa was Sweden's first double-deck gunboat, one of the most magnificent battleships in 17th century Europe. After three years, she was finally set to go into battle. Sweden's King Gustav II Adolf anxiously awaited the ship's arrival on the battlefront. On Sunday, August 10, 1628, hundreds of people gathered on the shore of Stockholm's Bay to see the Vasa set sail for the first time. On board, some 100 crewmen, joined by women and children for a quick spin around the harbor. Then, tragedy. The ship was less than a mile from shore, with only four of her ten sails up, when a gust of wind sprang up from the southwest. As astonished witnesses watched, the Vasa toppled over. 100 passengers scrambled to safety. Nearly 50 others drowned with the ship, 100 feet below the Baltic Sea. An immediate investigation concluded that neither the crew nor those who built the ship were at fault. But the ship's design came under quiet criticism. Some suspected that the king's insistence on a second deck had caused the ship's demise. The Vasa was soon forgotten, left to rot in her murky grave for more than three centuries. Then, in 1954, a Swedish maritime historian and archaeologist named Anders Franzén wanted to find out what remained of the Vasa at the bottom of the bay. The harbor in which she sank offered a tantalizing possibility. Unlike most oceans, the Baltic Sea's low salt level would keep shipworms from eating the wood away. Franzian set out to find the lost ship. But over the years, the Vasa's exact location had been lost. So Franzian decided to fish for her. He designed a simple device, a core sampler that consisted, essentially, of a piece of pipe with sharp edges attached to a long fishing line. Franzian hoped his hook would catch a piece of 17th century oak from the Vasa. In August 1956, after two years of searching, Franzian hit oak. He had found the Vasa. More importantly, scuba divers reported that much of her seemed to be intact. Franzian now wanted to bring up the ghost ship. If recovered, she would become the world's oldest fully salvaged battleship. The team decided to lift the Vasa with cables wrapped beneath the ship's hull. After two years of underwater preparation, Franzian and his team members were ready for the first stage of the lift. The Vasa's waterlogged wood and muddy hull weighed over a thousand tons, more than twice the ship's original weight. It was impossible to know whether the 330-year-old ship would hold together as she was lifted closer to the shore. But the Vasa proved sturdy. She was carefully reinforced and prepared for the final lift. In 1961, nearly a decade after Franzian began his hunt, reporters from around the world watched as Franzian and his team attempted to raise the ghost from Sweden's past. On uh, April 24 at 9 o'clock, the first piece of the Vasa was come up. It was quite fantastic uh, to see the piece coming, uh, coming up from bottom after 333 years. Amazingly, she floated to shore on her own keel. The ship was in excellent condition. But now that she was above water, the Vasa faced its most dangerous enemy yet, air. Waterlogged wood can start cracking in a matter of days. Franzian and the preservationists faced a massive challenge. 
how to preserve more than 13,000 ship parts and 700 wood sculptures. They decided to use a painstaking process to keep the ship from drying too fast. Over the next 17 years, nearly 24 hours a day, the Vasa was power sprayed with a mixture of polyethylene glycol and water. The technique dried the wood while filling air pockets at the same time. In total, 580 tons of water were expunged from the ship. And experts believe they solved the mystery of why the Vasa sunk. A stability test conducted before the ship set sail had, in fact, failed. But it seemed the king needed his ship in a hurry. So the test results were ignored, a fatal mistake. Because in reality, the Vasa's second deck made her top heavy. The extra weight was simply too much to balance. Today, experts believe that if the Vasa had been built about one foot deeper and three feet wider, she may not have toppled. A tragic miscalculation whose recognition came three centuries too late. In 1990, the Vasa went on permanent display inside a specially constructed museum in Stockholm, Sweden. The Vasa stands less than a mile from where she originally sank.